What is going on, guys? The Inside Blue Podcast, and today we're breaking down the New York Giants offseason. They, of course, went 6-11 and this season. This is our first year covering the New York Giants, and it was not a good one. The Giants did not have it this year. They made the playoffs last year under Brian Dable. This year, things completely went off the roller coaster. This was a roller coaster of a season. There were injuries. Daniel Jones tears his ACL. A lot of issues with this team. There was some a ton of issues that we're going to break down in this video. But it, you know, this is a season where Giants fans kind of got fooled, right? They make the playoffs, and you think maybe this team could maybe string together some consistent seasons and, you know, maybe make the playoffs two years in a row under Brian Dable. But all all it took was a tougher schedule, and this team struggled. Uh, week one really just to find how this season was getting blanked against the Dallas Cowboys at your home home stadium in MetLife. And, you know, I can get into that game all I want, but go watch that video on the other uh, on the other videos on the channel. The thing that I am most concerned with is the QB situation. Right. This team. Uh, you know, picks number six in the draft. And the big question is what type of Daniel Jones we're going to get in next season. Is it going to be the Daniel Jones that made the playoffs, had a pretty decent season, or is it going to be like <clears throat> the Daniel Jones that we saw this season? Inconsistent throws, not able to look downfield, taking up sacks. You know, what type of Daniel Jones are we going to get? Because you know, it's not like his contract year is up. He is getting paid $40 million a year to play bad. I never agreed with the contract when they gave him the four-year, $40 million deal. But I think from a Giants front office, he had a decent season. You had to pay him. It's just it wasn't the right number. $40 million is not the right number for Daniel Jones. I was hoping it was like a 32, 33-ish mil deal, maybe 35 at most. But when I heard the news that Daniel Jones was getting signed to a four-year, $160 million deal, it wasn't that I was pissed off. I was more confused of, from a business perspective, how do you give a guy that only threw 15 touchdowns $40 million a year? And I know his wide receiver weapons are not top tier. He doesn't have a wide receiver one. He doesn't have any of that. But from a perspective, I'm shocked that he got $40 million per year. And now he gets injured and doesn't have a good year at all. You really, you know, regret giving him that contract probably because, quite honestly, he didn't deserve it. Daniel Jones has improved enough in the NFL that he deserves a luxury contract, you know, like that. I don't think he does, and I love the guy. I love the, you know, the guy and how hard he works and all that. But for a Giants fan, you know, perspective, we gotta hope he comes back healthy, coming off a torn ACL, which is not easy. And you know, hope the ball out. Hopefully, Joe Shane gives him some more weapons. You know, builds up the offensive line and all of that, because the offensive line has been one has been the main issue with this team. And that's why they don't have a higher-powered offense like the Dallas Cowboys, like the Eagles, 49ers, Bills, Chiefs, all of those teams. They all have a superior offensive line that their offensive, uh, you know, their quarterback can sit in the pocket and wait and wait until someone finally gets open. Five seconds is all Daniel Jones realistically, realistically gets. He doesn't get more than that. And you'll be lucky if he gets five seconds, honestly, in the pocket because of how bad this offensive line was this year. Evan Neal was straight trash. Justin Pugh was straight off the couch. You know, JMS had an okay rookie season. Of course, left tackle Andrew Thomas, we don't have to worry about him because he is probably a top four offensive lineman in the entire league. So you don't have to worry about him. Right guard was questionable. All of it was just not, not good. And it has to get better this off season. The Giants need to get better this off season, and I think they have all, 
all the tools to do that. I think they can definitely get better this offseason and be a good a good football team again. Because, I mean, the Giants used to be a really good football team and dominate the league. They've kind of hit the, you know, rock bottom in terms of, you know, success in this league. They haven't made the Super Bowl since 2011. Uh, they haven't realistically had a super good team in quite some time. I mean, the 2022 season was cool and all, but I just don't know if I would consider, you know, that a super good team because they beat up on bad teams, right? They did not beat up on the elite teams. And when they did play the elite teams like Dallas and like the Eagles, they got smoked. Like, they got smoked. Uh, but, you know, the Giants were off when and, you know, every category you could name. The offensive line, defensive line, everything. You know, I think the only really, real, you know, good position they were in were linebackers, and that was a struggle for many years. Uh, but McFadden and Okereke were a very good duo, and McFadden had a lot of growth. He had a lot of growth. Okereke had a really good season, you know, two and a half sack, uh, sacks, some tackles for a loss, 149 tackles. In all, all of the games played this year, you know, I still think Dexter Lawrence showed some growth, even though he is one of the better players in this league at the defensive line position. I still think he looked really good. Uh, I think you know Kayvon Thibodeau had had a better season, you know, a lot more sacks, getting to the quarterback. But I think for this. Uh, you know, junior season, I think for him, it's getting to the quarterback consistently and beating those offensive linemen. You know, I think with uh, with how he played this year, it was a bit inconsistent. You know, he would dominate at a point, and then he would go, you know, five to eight reps where he's just getting dominated or he's, he's getting held. But I still think that is a good good sign for Giants fans that they may have hit on a solid edge rusher in the draft. Uh, Evan Neal, on the other hand, in that draft, wasn't so much of a hit. Uh, but I still think Evan Neal could be decent. You know, you never know. A coach can change a player like like that. Now, I'm not saying this coach is all of a sudden going to make Evan Neal a Hall of Fame, you know, right tackle. But maybe he could show him some things that actually are worth are worth it, unlike Bobby Johnson. Um. Yeah. So another thing is with this Giants defense is you know they kept them in games, right? The Giants. There were times where the Giants were still in it, and they had a chance to you know pounce, but their offense couldn't do it. Think about the Bills game. That game was a fourteen to nine score. Fourteen to nine. The Giants played amazing defensively against Josh Allen. And Stephon Diggs. Deontay Banks locked down Stephon Diggs. And the Giants were able to get to Josh Allen and play well. They allowed 14 points to the Buffalo Bills, who were in a playoff game this year. If you have a mediocre quarterback or a better wide receiver core, you probably end up on top of that and get a win in, win in the win column. But they do not. They They lose that game. You know, a lot of injuries to to the quarterback position with Daniel Jones, the rib injury for Tyrod. What is the future with Tommy DeVito? Is this guy quality or good enough NFL quarterback where you can plug him in as your, your backup QB to Daniel Jones or to whatever QB is coming in the future? Because I don't think Daniel Jones is going to last these four years. I think he does get cut after the second year. I'd be shocked if they – stay with Daniel Jones for the full four years unless they actually just cannot find a QB. Uh, but this draft is important. We all know that. This is probably one of the bigger drafts I I you know bigger drafts we've seen in the recent years in terms of talent. This is a very talented offensive line board. You could say it's a pretty good wide receiver board as well. Um, but I think for the New York Giants, if they can draft well these next two to three years, 
and get some steals somehow or get some good picks. It helps the Giants out significantly. They could just find good offensive linemen, whether it's through the draft, whether it's through free agency, you name it. But I, you know, I think with this team, they've done a lot wrong. They've done a lot wrong. They thought they had a really good team this year. They did not. They didn't have a kicker in the Saints game. They had Jamie Gillum play, you know, have a have a ride at the kick uh, for the field goal, and he did end up making it, but just a lot of bad stuff. Mark Golinski playing, you know, blocking tight end, all sorts of stuff like that. Just not a good look. I think for the draft, you know, it's probably going to be either Joe Alt, Jaden Daniels, or Malik Neighbors. I think it's one of those three guys, and it's just what the front office feels what is best and also how the board plays out. I know, you know, you guys have tuned into a lot of the mock drafts on this channel. We've taken offensive line. We've taken quarterback. We haven't really been able to take Malik neighbors because he hasn't been there. Uh, but we have taken Jaden Daniels. He's a stud prospect. He might go to new England. He might, you know, a cute, you know, a team might trade up for him ahead of the giants. We don't know. I think the biggest question for the draft is what happens with Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. Do the Chicago Bears stick with Justin Fields? Do they stick with him? Or do they move on, reset the QB market for that team, reset his contract, and draft a guy like Caleb Williams, who has the potential to be a solid QB in this in this league? So you, you go to that, you draft Caleb Williams, select maybe a guy on the defensive end with their second pick, whether it's a guy like Dallas Turner, Teron Arnold, any of those guys, Lat Latu Latu, so any of those type of guys. Will you even take a wide receiver? Like if Romo Dunze falls or or, you know, they just decide to draft a cornerback. You know, we don't know what the Bears are gonna do. Maybe they go offensive line too, even though I don't think they're offensive line is that bad maybe they go that 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 route uh, but it's gonna be a fun draft uh definitely gonna you know hope that i have the time to go live for you guys and have a live stream going while the draft is going my live reaction all that sort of stuff uh but yeah it's probably one of the bigger drafts for the new york giants definitely take draw all for a wide receiver or a quarterback i know i'm gonna get a lot I don't think they're going to take a wide receiver at six just because they already kind of have their wide receivers with Darius Slayton as your wide receiver one with Wanda Robinson and Jalen Hyatt. Those are probably your one, two, three. And then you can maybe fill it in with uh, maybe a depth guy or someone maybe in the draft. I don't really know. But getting to the next thing to talk about, uh, it's kind of the Wink Martindale situation. I kind of skipped over the Jalen Hyatt topic because Jalen Hyatt, we didn't really get what we wanted with him because he didn't really play much. Brian Dable didn't really have him on the field that much. But when he did, he played, you know, he had some, you know, nice catches. Uh, but getting to the Wink Martindale situation, kind of what a lot of people are looking forward to because I never really gave my opinion when it actually happened. It happened kind of a while ago uh, that. The Giants and Wink Martindale are mutually parting ways. And now Wink Martindale is coaching for the Michigan Wolverines going up to college football. So that should be interesting for him. Uh, but, you know, I didn't mind Wink first year. First year, I thought he had some good stuff. He, he is a guy that will heavily blitz you and put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. But... If you verse a guy that is good against the blitz, like Dak Prescott, like some of the other QBs that you played, they're just going to terrorize you. And that's why the Giants got destroyed by Dak Prescott and many other QBs, because when they sent out blitzes or they dropped Kayvon Thibodeau in coverage or they did any sort of stuff like that, it hurt the Giants. It hurt the Giants. And, you know, getting back to, you know, defend, defense, I wonder what they're going to do with Isaiah Simmons. I wonder if they're going to re-sign him. I think if they do, it's going to be maybe a one, two-year deal at like three and a half, 
$5 million per year. And also the Giants are tight in cap space right now. They only have $31 million to spend. So I think most of that's going to be invested on the offensive line. Uh, but, yeah, Wink Martindale decides to basically go off on Brian Dable and all of this, even though the, we all knew that the racial relationship was dead between Brian Dable and Wink Martindale. They were trying to hide it, but it was not – it was very clear that they did not get along. Uh, but getting into some of the hirings, Shane Bowen from the Tennessee Titans is heading to the New York Giants as the defensive coordinator. Shane Bowen – Kind of what I have in my note. He's young. He's an established leader. Uh, he's very good in the red zone, which the Giants did struggle in. He's got a top unit. Well, he had a top unit back in Tennessee. So maybe that helps out the Giants because when it's in the red zone, the Giants are very bad. Uh, and, you know, we look at the Gi the Shane Bowen defense about keeping the opponent off the scoreboard. We look at it here. The Giants... Uh, under Wink Martindale, were uh, ranked 26th in, in 2023. And then in 2022, they were ranked 22nd with 22.8 points per game. For the Tennessee Titans, they ranked 11th in scoring defense, allowing just 20.8 points per game, and then 10th in 2022 with 19.9. Also, Bowen's defense is excellent at stopping the run. Giants struggle against the run. We all know that. They led the NFL in rushing defense, allowing 83.5 uh, and then 76 point yards per game. Last season, the Titans also dropped to the number 14 spot with allowing 100 points, 107.7 rushing yards per uh, And then with the Giants defense, they stunk uh, under kind of under him, you know, 29th and 28th under Boyd Marndale. Uh, but, you know, to wrap up the coaching, they also hired Carmen uh, Brasillo, Raiders uh, O-line coach. He ranked sixth highest in pass blocking efficiency and were considered a top 10 offensive unit. So a lot to like there. Uh, Shane Bowen was not the Giants' number one, number one option. It was Denard Wilson and Got the other guy's name, but things are getting, you know, good, right? Hiring the right people, hoping that this works, and if it does work, perfect. Giants offensive line could be better. Maybe you get some Evan Neal uh, growth, hopefully. I think he's one of the biggest players to watch out for next year, you know, if he really does stink under any coach, or he, you know, he shows some improvement. Obviously, he suffered from an ankle injury for most of the year. That's why he was out. But, yeah, hoping for this draft to just come soon. It's not until April. I want it to happen soon. I appreciate you guys all for, you know, sticking through it this season. You know, liking the video, subscribing, viewing it. This is the first season of the Inside the Boot podcast breaking down. The New York Giants, I appreciate all of you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.